Who better to teach us how to cook wild turkey than the bone collector himself? Join me, David Bancroft, and my friend, Michael Waddell, on Prime Cuts Wild Game Edition. Hey, y'all. I'm David Bancroft, and I'm honored to be hosting Season 2 of Prime Cuts Wild Game Edition. Today, we've got the Exmark Ambassador, the Bone Collector, Michael Waddell. Glad to Welcome be here, Michael. man. When y'all said wild game, I knew I needed to drive on over. And so I'm so excited to bring a couple wild turkey over, and the one we're cooking now is actually one my wife got this past spring on our farm. So excited about that. I love I love turkey, and I especially, being from the South, I like to fry turkey. So, so this is a wild turkey bird that your wife harvested. That's correct. She, she Don't tell her I took it. She's going to be mad at me. So did you hunt this in Georgia? Where was this bird? This is Georgia. This is on our farm. But uh, I love wild game. And it's funny, my wife, she grew up in the city and never been part of it. And now, like, she's on me. Like, we start, she'll look in the freezer and like, you you supposed to be a professional hunter. What, what, we down to three packs of ground beef. I'm like, I'm Where's sorry. Where's my grocery honey? store? Yeah, exactly. My grocery store is out. Yeah, exactly. Go to work. Exactly. Go to work. So, But I'll start. So so here's the, uh, here's obviously the turkey breast. And you can see the grain. And uh, now me... And everybody has a different opinion on this, but I always like to kind of come a across across the grain mm -hmm. first, you know, and, and cut it, try to find the, the grain. And like, and, 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 and it, the meat runs a lot of different ways. Like you can see there, it's, run, it's running kind of this way. So when I'm cutting a nugget, I would rather cut it, you know, like, like this. And, and, and part of the trick with this is too, is I like to cut it in smaller, smaller nuggets so something like that and one thing about wild game and i feel the same with turkey anything or any extra fat or sinew you know i think you should get it off i do cook a lot about that thick mm -hmm. but it does take a little longer to cook the thicker pieces and um, but it's still good and then the next step i typically do david is take this nugget here mm -hmm. and i will put it from this point i will put it over into uh what i guess you would consider your brine or, or your brine. marinade or in um and what I've done here is I've done everything over the years. Used to be my favorite way to do this was so, buttermilk, so. but now I'm using pickle juice and jalapeno, I guess pickle juice, that I'm letting it sit, preferably, you know, several hours, even overnight. So we're gonna come here, we got our flour, right? We're gonna season it yeah, with. Yeah, you go ahead and season that up. I, I mean, like I said, there, you know, whatever, whatever you like, if you like stuff, I know people that they'll, they'll make a kind of a, a spicy, you know, flour mm -hmm. concoction. A little more salt. Heck yeah. We'll do a little dash of garlic and a little dash of cayenne, kind of kick Sounds it up. Sounds good to me. Just go match that jalapeno you got. And after that, I pretty much just take, just take the turkey, mm -hmm. just throw some in. And uh, I try to keep it as dry as I can when I throw it in there. Otherwise it just kind of- so You don't want to overcrowd it, it and get, all yeah, that? Yeah, get, get, it'll get kind of gummy otherwise. And then we'll just take a few pieces and just go ahead and get it cooking so you can you know, see what it looks like. But I've noticed too, if you're cooking a lot, I try to get as much flour as I can off of it. So I don't really need a lot of this flour. Yep. And from here, I always try to get my peanut oil about 350, which I think that's about what that is. And then cook it till it's golden brown. It don't take long. And we'll just drop it right in there. I've noticed too, when it's floating like that and gets golden brown, it's usually ready to rock. Brother, this looks amazing. I mean, you can, obviously it smells like Sunday fried chicken in here. <laughs> it smells like Sunday. It smells like Mama Jean's house. And, but you can see how ribbon and flaky it is. It's like almost crusted in cornflakes, it looks like. You get all that crispy batter. That is literally like. <laughs> I'm telling you. So I think first we'll do, uh, We'll do the, the spicy honey mustard, and my wife loves honey mustard. Okay. She is honey mustard, chicken tenders, chicken fingers, chicken, I mean. She loves it. Fried chicken. But I started doing fried turkey strips for her and turkey nuggets, and and one day I made the sauce I wanted, and she's like, I just, I don't like that kind of sauce. So mm -hmm. I made her a special honeydew sauce. So her sauce. This is her sauce. There you go. So for her sauce, I've got some, some Duke's mayonnaise, and this one's super easy. I mean, hunting camp, you could do this one. Some Dijon. It depends how mustardy you like it. So you can add to or take away whatever you want to do. But that mayo gives it a creamy base. I got gotcha. you. And then a little bit of honey. Look out. Low, slow. Do the tall pour. 
<laughs> okay, I'm gonna put a pinch of salt, and then we're gonna throw a little dash of cayenne just to kind of kick it up a notch. Still gotta throw a little spice in there, right? A little bit of something, something. And then this one is super easy. And so this is gonna make it just, you know, stick really nice to this fried turkey. <laughs> I'm ready to dip one on <laughs> So we're gonna, we're gonna load this one up. And then we're gonna do the his sauce now. Okay. So now we're gonna come over to the grill. I brought some poblanos. Okay. And what I did was I made, we're gonna make some poblano ranch. And we've got this green poblano puree that's just pureed with buttermilk. Wow. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna come over here to the green egg and you see these beautiful poblano peppers. Mm -hmm. Now these are kinda, kinda like a bell pepper. Right. But uh, probably one notch up. To get these, to get to that puree, we're just gonna put them on the grill. So you can see on these peppers, nice and blistering hot. And you can hear them kinda cracking. Well, all we wanna do is we wanna get them nice and charred like this. So we can pull the skin back. And you just kinda wipe it back like that. Yep. And you see the flesh there. And now you can see on these poblanos here, all we've done is, is charred the outer skin. So you will pull that skin off though. Pull the skin off like that. And you can see it and smell. I mean, beautiful roasted green chili. So we're gonna take a little bit of the Duke's mayonnaise for this one, just the same. And this, like I said, is mayo buttermilk poblanos. That's it. Wow. I just pureed this in a blender with the buttermilk. Now we've got basically the texture of ranch dressing. Mm -hmm. And then oh, for seasoning's nice. sake, you can buy these, you know, ranch dressing packets yes, at yes. the grocery store. And I'll tell you what, put this in the flour next time oh, and I try a ranch, a ranch yeah. seasoning. Sometimes I'll fry homemade tortilla chips and season them with ranch and make like cool ranch chips. Yeah, yeah. So you can use this stuff in all kind of sorcery. Holy cow. And so now we've got a, a fire roasted poblano ranch and this is the his sauce. Like I said, I threw a jalapeno yes. in this one too. Wow. All right, so now we've got our poblano ranch dressing. So his and her there. So now you got the his and hers. Right. Pick your weapon. All That's right. my weapon. You got your weapon? I got it. Okay, I'm we're going. going we're going to dip. There yeah. we go. Do we got lock arms like yeah. that? There we go. Uh, Where are you at, Emerald? Oh, ma'am. That is good. Brother. Brother. That's right. I mean, the whole world going to be turkey hunting after they taste a bite of that. I'm telling y'all, the brine in this turkey you get that jalapeno, you got some of that, the, the tanginess from the vinegar, but you're definitely picking up that jalapeno, that dill pickle, and it's, it's almost, I hate to say it, it's a little bit better than that restaurant that doesn't serve chicken sandwiches on Sunday. It is. Mm. That's good. Brother, as, as much as I love the wild turkey fried like that, and that's, that's that's probably my favorite way. Right. But as a chef, I like to do some kind of fancier techniques as well. And I wanted to show you one. I, I brought this immersion circulator. And if you see this, it's like a jacuzzi. I thought it was a pedicure. Going it on. is. Well, I was going to offer you a pedicure. But... <laughs> so, you know, what I've learned in, in using this piece of equipment as a chef is, is we can go through and we can basically undercook things. I got you. When you talk about overcooking and getting backstrap of venison tough or getting wild turkey tough, this little contraption here brings the water into a heat coil mm -hmm. and spits it back out exactly to the temperature that you want. I got you. So as opposed to USDA telling us to cook a turkey to 165 and kill it dead. Right. Or, or chicken. Mm -hmm. This right here, I dialed it in to 145 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. And so I took it and brined it and I threw mine in just a saltwater brine. It's got okay. a little bit of cayenne, some fresh bay leaves, and then we we literally poached it in there. Okay, yeah, like an egg, like a, like a poached egg, essentially. What that we're gonna is do so cool. is we're gonna take this, put just a little bit of olive oil on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we've got a smoking hot grill. There we go. Now on these big green eggs like this, you wanna make sure if you got a, a smoking hot grill, yeah. you wanna burp it. Give it a little bump, get some air into it, and then open up. 
Okay. Otherwise, well, it'll be like that movie Backdraft, and that air just Come hits on. a fireball. So now all we're gonna do is grill mark this guy. Nice hot heat. So you're just searing it now. Now we're just putting a little bit of that caramelization and that color to it. Okay. So we're gonna put a little bit of oil on their side, get a little bit of flame with this. I'm okay with a little bit of fire kicking up. So now like you can see, bit. yeah, you can see this right here. Yes. It's already got its grill marks. It looks like it's been grilled. Right. But we're we're not gonna give it the amount of time that you would normally spend mm -hmm. as a whole raw turkey breast. Right. So this is gonna come off. 20... Because like I said, it's already done, correct? Oh yeah. It's done. That, that's yeah. So with this heat, we may we may get close to 150 degrees internally. Mm -hmm. But in reality, I'm probably gonna end up at like 148 degrees. Mm -hmm. Look at that. And so now you can see and I mean now we've got that grill flavor that we want and we oh, crave yeah. and, and, yep. and work in the backyard, work in the grill. Right. And very simply, you can see how just tender, yes. look how juicy it is. Oh my goodness. And it is completely, completely cooked. And so if you were to go through and look at the cross section here. Look at that. Now I would let this normally rest, but we're gonna go right on in and eat. But go on with it, I ain't scared of it. If you look there, I mean it is beautifully cooked. Perfect. Holy cow, that'd be the way to do your Thanksgiving turkey if you want to do a wild turkey. Absolutely. I mean you can throw in like your poultry seasonings in there. Yeah. You can Whatever totally you like. do this way. Dang. So a couple little thin slices like that. They go perfectly good in the in the sauces just the same. So now you can see that it, in a wild turkey, mm -hmm. normally when you cut it, it tenses up and gets real dry. Right, it does. And all these going across that muscle grain, like I, like you said earlier, you like to come across and cut across the grain or the muscle and so that you can get that pull apart. And you can see that, I mean, literally just pulling apart. There's wow. no tug to it, just... Mm-hmm. Mm, get you some. I was waiting on you to say the word. I was on green light the whole time. When I, you so talking. wild turkey tends to be tough. My goodness. Mm. That is amazing, David, oh. I'm telling you. Brother, I enjoy this experience and hearing the, the intentional purposes for you, not only just to hunt, but to, to live and raise your family and treat your family to this kind of, of living at your house. And, and it was it was special. Oh, well, thank you, man. I was glad to be part of it. I appreciate you having me on, man. Absolutely. I, I learned a lot. I'm a fan of what you do and a fan of all your restaurants, so it's cool to be over here today. You're okay, too. Oh, thank you, man. Oh, man, I'd hug it up. No, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all for joining us for our second season of Prime Cuts Wild Game Edition with our good friend, the bone collector, Michael Waddell. And we hope that you guys will join us for our next episode. Stay tuned.